Hey y'all, what are we gonna learn about today? How to autom automate some of your onboarding processes using flows. So this is something I recently um, found out about doing from my coworker, Alyssa. So huge shout out to her. Um, we're gonna be automating the assignment of permission set groups through a flow to different roles. Um, there's just so much you can do with this flow. So we're definitely gonna do a part two, but here's where we're gonna start. Okay, so first piece of this uh, is we are going to visit our permission set groups. So let's jump in here, permission set groups. If you are not familiar with a permission set group, it is simply a group of permission sets. You can create them super easily by naming them here and then it allows you to pick and choose which of your permission sets live in the group. What we're gonna try to accomplish here in this onboarding flow is we're gonna create our groups and then we're gonna automatically assign them based on the profile. So this is gonna really simplify your life in two ways. One, if you're not using permission set groups already and you have a lot of permission sets, go ahead and set these up because I find it really helpful. Now, if you have a very straightforward org and it's just one permission set per profile or role, go ahead and keep it that way. There's no need to overcomplicate, but if you use stuff like DocuSign or Conga or any sort of package license in addition to your in like your internal Salesforce stuff, create these. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. It's gonna make this flow a lot more simple and it's gonna keep stuff super clean. So step two here is we're gonna go ahead and actually create this flow. So let's visit this. We're gonna create a new flow. And we're gonna pick record triggered. So for the example that I'm going to use, we're going to say when someone becomes active is when we want them to go through this. So we'll go ahead and find our users since that's what we're going to run this on. I'm going to say created or updated. Perhaps you have an org where people become deactivated and then reactivated or they switch roles or profiles a lot. Um, this may be helpful for you guys. Um, otherwise, you can just do it when they're created at the start. Um, and I'm going to say that they active equals true is our condition for someone to enter this. So. So when it becomes active, it'll run through this and hopefully assign them all the permission sets that they need. Um, okay, we're gonna say that and done. All right, base level is set up. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is figure out which permission set we're actually gonna assign these people. So let's pick a decision and I'm gonna call this profile decision. Determines which. Big fan of descriptions, so please put those. Um, just a tip. Okay, um, we'll do this path for sales. We'll do this path for support. And we can do this path for success. So you guys can obviously have as many of these as you want. I'm sure most people have more than three profiles. Um, for the example, I'm just gonna show you these three, but get well. All right, so for sales, we're gonna say that if the record profile name contains sales they'll go down this path if the profile name contains support it'll go down this path and if the profile name contains success, it'll go down this path. Now, be careful with the contains, obviously that's a looser criteria than something like equals, but depending on how you have your profile set up, this probably may make your life a little bit easier. If sales managers and sales reps are getting the same permission sets, this may be helpful. You can even, once you get complex with this, you can break it out a little further if you wanted and say, Okay, we've got, you know, sales, support, success. You could even say after this, all right, is it a manager or not? If there are parts that they get together and parts they don't. We're going to keep this one super simple, though. We're going to be assigning one permission set per each of these. Okay, paths are set up. We've got our three. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable for the permission set group ID. So I'm going to call this permission set group ID 
text and save. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this variable and we're going to set it differently for each of these because each of these three uh, permission set groups have different IDs. So let's go ahead and set that for each of these. So we'll say assignment, sales PSG, assignment, and we're going to set that as, I'm going to go look it up. So pop back in here to your permission set groups that we just went through. All right, and let's grab our sales one. So you're going to be able to pull it right out of the URL. Take the 2F off the top. And there you go. We'll repeat this for support PSG assignment. Set that one as... And then we can set our success one. Amazing. All right, we don't want anything to happen here, so we'll just say end the flow. So if it's not one of these three, we're getting out of there. Okay, so now we have our assignment. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do is check to make sure that this hasn't already been assigned to them. Um, if you don't do that, there's a chance that you're gonna get errors from them trying to make duplicates. So what we're gonna do to check that is we're gonna use a get records element. Oopsies. find existing PSG. Okay. And we're going to look for permission set assignments, which is the junction object between the user and the permission set group. So we want to see if there's already one where the assignee ID equals our user ID. And the permission set is the same. So the permission set group ID is the same as our group already gave them. So this will help you if you do a lot of changing of roles. Um, because if someone's moving from support to success or success to sales or something like that, um, you'll still be able to run them through this flow and it's not going to have any issues with duplicates if you, they move back to a different role. Okay, so we'll go ahead and check that and then let's go ahead and make a decision based on whether or not we found something. Okay, so PSG existence check. Very existential. Okay, to be or not to be. Already has PSG. Needs PSG. All right. So we're going to say that if this was found, then they already have it. Otherwise, we're going to give it to them. So now we have the option. We can go ahead and hit end here. We don't, if they already have it, we don't care what happens. Well, I guess that's fine. Okay. If they need the PSG, though, we want to give it to them. Let's go ahead and create records. And we're going to create the permission set assignment junction object, which will basically assign them the group. All right. So create the PS permission set group assignment. And we are going to define this by saying permission set assignment. The assignee ID is going to be the user ID. And the permission set group ID is going to be the variable we set. I don't think that you have anything else here. You can have an expiration date, that's interesting. Okay, go ahead and do that. And that is really your whole flow. So basically, let's walk through this. When someone becomes active, it's gonna decide what profile they are if it falls into one of these three. 
it's going to assign a variable of the correct permission set group ID. Then it's going to go down here make sure they don't already have it or you're going to get an error if they do. Nothing happens. They just finish out the flow. And if they don't have it, it's going to create it for them. So let's go ahead and save this onboarding. Permission set group assignments, my new acronym that I've created. Again, use descriptions. I'm not for the purpose of this video, but please do uh, for your future admins. And let's go ahead and see if this works. All right. Let's go ahead and add a new user. Let's add um, Andy Cohen. Let's say his email is mine. There we go. He needs a Salesforce license and we're gonna do sales. We'll say he's the sales uh, profile and then I'm just gonna leave that. Okay, it's gonna automatically make him as active, so he should automatically run through this flow. He obviously doesn't have any, I'm gonna uncheck this because I don't want an email. He doesn't have any permission set group because it doesn't exist yet. So let's hit save and see what happens. All right, Andy's created as active, and there you go. There's his permission set assignment. So that's how that'll work. Um, love that, and if we wanted to say, okay, he's been deactivated, we can go ahead and do that. And if we reactivate him now, we're not gonna run into that error because it's gonna check for the duplicates. So let's go ahead and try that out. All good. So it's gonna know, hey, we checked for it, it's good. He, he took that other path in the flow. So let's go ahead and try something. I wanna see what happens here. We deactivate him. And then let's change his profile to support. and see what happens here. Lovely, okay, now he has the support one here. So maybe we'll do a part two or something where we do an offboarding where if someone becomes deactivated, we can re basically remove everything they have or something like that. Um, for now, onboarding is what we've got. We could go ahead and take Andy right out of that sales one if we need to, but this should be helpful. Um, it's really, really helpful for us in uh, the org I use in my day job every day. So I hope that you guys like this video. Um, and I'm definitely gonna do some part twos on onboarding stuff because I think there's so much you can do with this that is totally underrated. I just found out about all this stuff. I think it's so amazing. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what else um, you like to see in terms of what we can onboard.